So a few weeks ago, we installed a, um, a pump on this imported tow truck from the US. It was a fairly involved job. It did actually have a PTO install, and a PTO is actually a pump that's actually installed on the side of the transmission. It's a special little gearbox, and then the pump gets mounted onto that. But they've always had problems with that PTO setup. So there's a kit that the guys imported out of the United States. This is the big diesel V8. So this big engine has two alternators. One down there, and actually had another one down there where we have now actually installed a, uh, a gear pump. So the beauty of this setup is that it actually uses a magnetic clutch, much like a, uh, an air conditioning compressor would use. So there's an idler that runs continuously, and then you energize an electromagnet to actually engage and drive the pump. We did the mechanical install, it then went away for it's a lot of electrical work to be done, and it's only just come back for its final commissioning and testing. There are a, a group of load hold valves here and under there. Uh, and we'll need to set those because right now they're not, uh, I think they've been set too high and the pump's actually struggling and the belt is slipping. So is it, the first thing we're gonna do is actually disconnect the main line going into the pump in there somewhere. No, it's already been disconnected. Matthias is already disconnected. And we're going to connect our flow test kit and we're going to actually test what the pump can actually do, what, how much flow it can generate and at what pressure. Uh, and this is a kit that we created to make it easy for us irrespective of whether you connect your inlet here or your inlet there, a series of check valves will divert the flow so it doesn't matter where you put the oil in it will always come through that flow measuring device flow meter and then through this adjustable restrictor so this is how we induce a load you start off at zero pressure so here's a little mud map we drew we've got the square representing the truck that's the front of the truck that's the uh, engine, that's the pump on the engine. The original line came from the pump under the truck to the valve. We've disconnected this line that went to the valve. Now it's going to go through the flow meter, into the flow meter, out of the flow meter, and then we're going to put a new line to connect back to the valve. And then so we'll have a recirculating system Instead of coming from the pump to the valve to the tank to the pump to the valve, it'll go tank, pump, flow meter, valve, tank, pump, flow meter, valve. So Matthias, you want to be on YouTube, Matthias? Yeah. So this is Matthias. We've disconnected the hose down there from the that went to the valve, we now put a new additional hose extension and that hose goes into the flow meter here through the series of check valves, that oil will go this way around here, this check valve here will prevent it going this way so it has to force it through the flow meter, through the uh, flow control valve and then out through here, so this is a new hose we're going to take from here it's going to go back under the truck and into the valve and then we can do our test. So this is a flow test result sheet that we prepare. Uh, machine type, it's a Ford F450. It's a new pump circuit that we're testing. Today's date, the client, abbreviated. So the first we started zero pressure or system pressure which should be very small uh, temperature today 24 degrees 
depending on the size of the tank, temperature may increase rapidly or may not increase very much at all. But the idea is we go in stages of 500 psi, starting at zero, 500, 1000, 1500. We'll see how high we go. The issue we have with this system is that the valves, the load hole valves are probably set too high. They've just come from the factory. Maybe they weren't set at the factory. Probably not. We need to set those valves so that they release before the belt starts slipping that drives the pump. But to, in order to do that, we need to know where we are. So we'll test to 500, we'll test to 1000 psi, and we'll also record the flow. So the, the way we do that is we've got our flow test kit. Everything is all now connected up. We've got one hose coming from the pump, going through the system, through the flow check valve, through the load inducer, which is a needle flow control valve, out through here, and that's then going back into the truck and into the valve. So we'll start it up, and then while Matthias increases the load, I'll film. So uh, we're in park, so we'll start the engine up. As you can see, engine is running, but the clutch hasn't engaged yet. So we're about to engage the clutch, and then we'll load up the system. two I've been told you can actually hear the pumper running yes we've got flow registering there which is 20 liters per minute or about six gallons all right I'll just have a look at the pump quickly so now the flux is engaging it's now driving the pump this is the main suction line coming from the back Somewhere down in there is the discharge, the high pressure discharge, going to the flow control. All right. <laughs> Matthias is now going to slowly in increase the valve until we start to see some registration. Starting to get pressure increased. Go to a thousand. Which is not good. All right. 
Temperature has increased a little bit because we're putting some work into the oil now. I think we've got a, a belt drive issue. We might need to tension the belt somehow. But it's a spring tension belt, so I'm not quite sure what we're going to do about that. So we found our problem. So as we've increased the back pressure, flow dropped a little bit, but that could also be load on the engine, slowing the engine down slightly. Most computers though will try and maintain a, a certain RPM. We got to about 1400 PSI and then we actually heard the belt start to slip over the pulley. That's a pretty big multi-grooved belt. 1400 PSI is probably not thought we would have get to at least 2000 or 2500. So we need to look at why that belt is slipping. Uh, there is a spring tensioner there. Um, it's an automatic spring tensioner. Whether we can get some more tension on that or not, I honestly don't know. Whether we can get a stronger tensioner, I don't know. Um, we followed the design from the manufacturer. There's plenty of wrap. So let's see what happens.